I'm Kayla, and like I said, I work with Jenny Dye, and um, I'm a CNA, and I've been working with SNAP as paid staff for a little over a year now, and so I've had some good experience in the field doing lots of different things, and one of them that's my favorite is making demos. And I'm Megan, who's been experienced, and um, this is my most favorite thing. I love being in the classroom and being in front of the kids. It's really exciting, and it's just for so you guys know, it's not supposed to be like a stressful time. It's supposed to be fun for you and fun for the kids. So. All right, so we're going to start today, and what we want to talk to you about is we have a new curriculum that we have and that we've kind of adapted to better suit our needs and what we do in the classroom with the kids. So that if you've never gone out, if you've never done a cooking demo before, we can give you this information and you can read it over before you go out and be comfortable in what you're presenting and what you're teaching the kids because it should be easy, it should be stress-free, it's a lot of fun. Um, so basically we're going to start with the curriculum. So if we talk to you like we're talking to a K through second grade class today, it's because that's what our lesson is. Um, so we kind of want to show you what it is that we do by teaching you the lesson, but also we're going to kind of take little breaks in between to ask questions, see if you've had any similar experiences for people who've been out in the field before, if you have any questions, and um, just to kind of give you our personal feedback with what we've done in the past. So um, basically, before you go out to the field, you're going to have a couple different things, and um, one of them, no. Okay, so basically you're going to come into the field, and like we're dressed right now, we're in our blue snack shirts, and we have, I think we have a bulk of capris today, but of course we're going to wear your Bermuda shorts as long as they're nice and long. And then we follow these rules because these are what the classroom and the school rules are as far as their policy goes. And so um, at our schools, it's low-toed shoes. So if you don't have a pair of sneakers, get one because you're going to need it. Um, Megan's actually not in dress code today, so that's what you don't bad to do. <laughs> but it's because that's what the schools say. So we don't want to come to the schools where kids are given these rules and guidelines and we're breaking them. We're not leading by example. Kids watch everything that we do, everything that we say. So we set that an example in our dress code and how we talk about what we're presenting today. So basically when we go out, we have these great little cooking carts and um, most program managers will have one if you're doing these, so that's helpful. And they'll have your label on them and there's all kinds of fun gadgets in them. And so you'll get everything that you need for that specific lesson. And the other thing that we do when we come into the classroom is we have this poster. So maybe I'll talk to you about <coughs> And before, when you first go into the classroom, it's always good to talk with the teacher. I mean, sometimes I don't even remember to do this first, but always talk with the teacher to, just like Michelle, give you some ideas of how to get the class attention sometimes when they're Know, getting a little rowdy, but it's always good to talk to the teacher also to see what works for their class. So you're doing something that's familiar to them. But uh, we always like to talk about the tasting rules, and we just made this lovely new poster that you guys are going to be able to bring. So the first rule is being patient. You know, I really like to talk about the kids and say, be patient, and then talk about it so to their understanding. So I say, you know, being patient is. We're going to all wait till everyone gets their snack, and then count to three, and all try it together. And then I go to the second rule, keeping it positive. We're going to say, we're not going to say things like, ew, gross, I don't like that. And then I explain why. Because we don't want, you know, I might like something, and if someone says that they don't like it, then the kid's not going to probably try it. And they're going to be like, oh, I don't like it either. And then take another fake bite. So we all take one no thank you bite. We take one bite, and then if we don't like it, we say, no thank you. We don't they say things like, ew, gross, I don't like it. And after I go through the rules to keep, to make sure that they understand them and that they were listening, I ask, okay, so what is one rule that I just said? Could someone tell me one rule that I just said? Anybody? <laughs> Marcia? Be patient. Yeah. And I mean, most likely, they're not going to be like, be patient. They'll tell us, you know, don't say ew, yeah, and that's perfect. So, can anybody tell me another rule? Come on! Anybody? Yeah, one to thank you by it. And my last rule? Keep it positive. Keep it positive. And what's keeping it positive? We don't say things like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> So we go into the classroom, sometimes there's a whiteboard area, um, or just ask the teacher where a good spot to put it in. <coughs> we want the kids to be able to see it, um, not 
not just talk about it. And then we also, like we said, ask the teacher, what are your rules? What are your quieting procedures? Because if they already have something in place, it's so much easier to use what the kids already know than what we're going to introduce to them. So today's lesson, um, and each of the lessons pair with our harvest of the month. So what we're going to do is September's upcoming lesson, and September's harvest of the month is cucumbers. And so we're going to be tasting a recipe today, and it's our country cucumber salad. But before we start our recipe, we like to talk to the kids about what we're going to be doing that um, they'll get to do and help us with and what they get to try. And we just like to, like we said, go over the classroom procedures really quick. And then um, we want to start by giving the kids a pop quiz. And of course, kids are going to be like, oh my gosh. And you just, this is when you use your, you know, your good, quiet, maybe affirmation voice. And like, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. We're just going to take a little quiz. It's not a big deal. And this is our thumbs up for true, thumbs down for false. And so um, these are some little questions that we, you and I might think are kind of silly. But for the kids, it's just one more reinforcement that's positive about good um, and healthy behaviors, not just with food, but with exercise and some safety. So the first question, is it healthy to wear a seatbelt? OK, you guys, you're in kindergarten. Come on, come on, thumbs up. All right, I always wear a seatbelt. Sorry. Megan. Part of that's awesome to do that. I would always do something. Yeah, make sure to keep it positive. Be honest. Is it healthy to eat a balanced breakfast every day? Awesome. I regularly eat a balanced breakfast. <laughs> Is it healthy to brush and floss your teeth? I brush and floss my teeth daily. <laughs> brush daily. I brush daily. Flossing. It's healthy to get 60 minutes of exercise almost every day. And that's our goal. I get 60 minutes of exercise almost every day. Is it healthy to get enough sleep every night? <laughs> it is healthy. Do we always do it? <laughs> so this is just a fun little thing to get the kids going. It's just kind of like a quick little warm-up. And then with these lessons, these Monrovia lessons that we're introducing to you, there's also another aspect of it that's not just nutrition. It's this health and health behaviors. And so this one has to do with, of course, physical activity. We're going to talk to the kids about hydration and how important it is to be hydrated. And in this one, there's little, um, little like handouts that we have laminated with different things on them. And so in this particular lesson in the classroom, you would stand up, you would have your chef or model, because when we come into the classrooms, we're chefs. We're chefs. So our chefs would come in, and if there's multiple chefs, that's perfect. You have them throughout a couple. If not, you'd be able to ask the teacher how to put them up in the classroom. And then you would either get the kids to all stand up out of their seats. So everyone stand on up. And we're going to grab a couple parts. So if, you're, if they're in desk, you're going to want the kids to move away from their desk. So in this instance, for the rest of the demonstration, I'm going to have you guys on your feet and standing. So if you want, feel free, please, to move your chairs kind of to the side and out of the way. Come up and gather around. I know there's some people that are height challenged, like myself. So feel free to move up to the front so you can see what we're doing. Don't um, be shy. Don't be shy. Gather around. 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 If the kids are in their class, like heel jacks, OK, that's something that's a little more reasonable, or squats. So we'd start with everyone, and Megan actually has the march, march in place. So everyone, you'd have everyone march in place for 10 seconds, go. You know, so everyone's marching, so excited that you're here, talking about the professionals. <laughs> Make sure you're in your front of class, too, that you're really excited, because the more excited you are, the more excited your class is going to be. Perfect. All right. And the next one, get some room around you to be able to get some nice, good squats going. And it's so important when you're in the classroom with the kids oh, to be really energetic. Yeah. And it's also important to get the teacher really, really, really enthusiastic for doing it with you. The teacher is helping. Sometimes teachers are so much more likely to just want to sit at their desk, grade papers, which is fine, I understand that. But when we're here in the classroom, we want them to participate because if they participate, the kids are going to participate. If the teacher does it, they do it. If we do it, they're going to do it. So it's so, so important to bring that into the classroom and that energy as well as getting the teacher to help out with you. All right. So if you guys are comfortable where you are, that's fine. If you guys want to gather around a little closer to see, 
that's what we're doing. And just to let you guys know, some cooking demos, like my cooking demos, when I go to the classroom, I have a half hour. So you might not be able to go through every single exercise. So you kind of have to think about it before you go and maybe pick one or two, like Kayla said. Um, if you have longer, then, you know, then do them all. But kind of, it kind of have to adapt to how much time you have. And it depends on your classroom. These lessons are for K through second grade and then third through sixth grade. But what we don't have specifically are like our special day classrooms where we have kids with special needs. So when you come into the classroom, it's going to be about what you see, what the teacher is doing, how the kids are paying attention, how they're interacting with the teacher. And you might have to take that and adjust it to better suit that individual classroom's needs that you're in. All right. So the next thing that we do is if we're doing um, a demo, we have two different types and actually can I borrow that person's folder that's right there? Is that okay? <laughs> All right. So, hopefully, folders, you have a copy of the lesson that we're doing. So if it helps you, if you're a visual and you want to watch what we're doing, if you want to read along, that's fine. And then we also have these little things, and it's a cooking demonstration sheet. This is like step-by-step -step directions of how to do exactly what you're going to do when you make the food, which makes it so easy. There's two different ways. One says um, student-led demo, and that's the one where each student has um, a little place setting in front of them, which you've given them, and they're actually doing what they're going to be doing for themselves to eat right in front of them. And the other one is the snack staff-led demonstration, where you're doing it and then you'll distribute. And that's actually what we're going to be doing today. And then in case you're all not diet, wannabe dietitians and nutrition majors, on the back are these really handy tasting cheat sheets. And it gives you different um, standards on there for like the teacher and then different understanding. So this one you might be talking about like fractions, like half cup, fourth cup, all that <coughs> stuff. But there's also um, nutrition tips on there. So in this recipe today, you're getting a lot of fiber, you're getting a lot of vitamin C, and it kind of breaks it down and describes it in ways that are easy for kids to understand. And when you're in a classroom and you are talking about nutrition, it's always good to, instead of standing up there, just like spitting out information, because if you're most likely not going to remember everything you say, ask them as many questions as you can to get their engagement. Because as you guys know, you don't want to sit here and have us just talk at you the whole entire time. That's why we're trying to get you guys engaged. That's why I've been trying to ask questions that to see what you guys know. So it's always good to just ask, ask, ask. And then the other thing that we like to do right before we actually make the food is we like to pass out. Can you guys see? Do you think you guys could see if you guys sat back down? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're all shared direct. So when you get into the office, the first thing that you see. There we go. All right. <laughs> That's okay. I can be really loud. Um, so we like to practice um, food safety, of course, in the classroom. And we do this in a couple different ways. We always have these really great disposable gloves that we wear when we're preparing and serving food for the kids. And then um, in each bin, you guys should have um, hand sanitizer. Of course, some classrooms have sinks. Great, have the kids go ahead and start by washing their hands. We would do the same thing. If not, there's a little hand sanitizer. And I always talk to them about after they take hand sanitizer, what do they not touch? Like, do we put our fingers in our nose? We're like, no! Like, do we touch our hair? No! Like, do we put our fingers in our mouth? No, just so you know, after you hand sanitize, we have to still keep them sanitized. So in your bags that you'll have packed up, you'll have a couple of different things. For this recipe, it asks for little portion cups and forks for the kids, and then of course napkins and gloves for yourself.
Oh, and, yeah, this is like a little example of how a bat can be, and you go out into the field. I mean, you play on multiple as well as one. And then all these supplies, the bowls, mixing spoons, knives, everything like that is located upstairs in the break room on the supply shelf for all of our tasting materials. So if you have any questions about that, and you see one of us around the office, just grab us and show you where it is. So at this point in time, if I have tomatoes, I'll, you know, hey, does anyone, can anyone tell me what these are? Can anyone tell me where they grow? Where do you see them? You know, things like that. And then this is our, our dressing. So that already comes with it, so we don't have to mix that. And then these are some of the cucumbers. So if the kids were doing this lesson in front of themselves, each kid would get a cucumber round and a couple cherry tomatoes, and they'd get to cut it up, and then we'd come back with the dressing and pour it in a little container for them, and they mix it up and eat it. That way what they touch, and the, what they're touching with their hand goes in their mouth and their mouth only, which is really helpful. If you have a classroom of little kids that aren't into it, or the teacher's like, I don't want to give them knives, then you're like, okay, I'll do the demonstration in front of you. So that's what we're going to do. And you don't give them like big knives like this. Plastic. Yeah, they're plastic, just to be right there. All right. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> and then the other way that um, the demonstration could be done is that if everything was done ahead of, ahead of time, like making soap, actually just look through all these. You guys didn't even see it, I was so fast. <laughs> we'd go ahead and just mix it all up. things that happen sometimes in the field. You get out and you realize you have a classroom of 40 kids and you're like, oh my gosh, I only brought one bowl. What am I going to do? <laughs> a lot of things on your feet. Yes. Because everything doesn't always go smoothly. As people who have gone out with me <laughs> have realized, sometimes you forget the most and you have to think on your feet and figure out what you're going to do. For instance, I went out into the field and I've been doing it for a long time, but you know, I was just having a great morning and was not thinking at all. I drove all the way up to Williams, which for you guys don't know, is an hour and 15 minutes away, and had no melon. So I went to um, I went to like a local farmer who was selling melon. We got some melon, went to the deli, got it cut up, and then went to the classroom. And it worked out just fine. So sometimes things like that happen. And I've been doing it for a long time, and it happened to me. So don't feel bad if it doesn't go as you plan. So with this recipe, it's really simple. It comes with a dressing, it comes with the tomatoes and the cucumber, and you just basically mix up and serve. And so we have um, cups up here and utensils. So if you guys want to come up, Sure. And sometimes in the classroom also, you know, after you've talked, you can always, there's different ways to get volunteers. You can ask questions, and you can ask the teacher if they have sticks to pull from to get helpers. I still like to call them like my little chefs, um, because, you know, they like to help them. I mean, little things would like, love to help. You'll have like five hands, ten hands up in the air. So ways to be fair is, you know, ask questions. You can have to do like a game. You put hands on the desk, ask them a question. Whoever has their hand up first, if they get the question right, they can come up and help. Sometimes even if they don't, I'm like, okay, good folks. <laughs> you can also ask the teachers too. The teachers have a really good understanding of who's been in the classroom all day, who's <coughs> answered questions, who's already volunteered. So sometimes asking them, will you help me select five students to help pass this out or help with this? They're always so more than willing to help you. They'll be like, oh yeah, Johnny, Susan, Stacy, come on over here and help me with this. So. Well, you're passing that out. Can I, or maybe, can I ask you a basic question? Sure. <laughs> Who, because I'm an SSA, so I don't know. Who's doing these, like, and where are they being done? Um, we have interns and we need staff members that through those different areas, like the one at the area I work with is Orville. 
So I talked to Jenny in our schools and we sent out different things to the teachers asking them, hey, we have these dates available that we can come in and actually do a little lesson and demo, and they sign up for them. And so we're usually the ones that come out and do that. I'm not sure where you're in SSA at. Well, I'm here in Chico at oh, okay. Yes, but um, that's why I was curious, going on in Chico too, or yeah, mostly out there. Yeah, no, we do it here in Chico, we do it out in Orville, we do it. Is that true? I mean, I guess my, what I'm curious about is who's, who is, like, the class that you, I mean, is Yeah, we go into classrooms, and so we have them scheduled, so. Um, but it's just one or two, either interns or staff, from SNAP, and they go out to that school, into that classroom. I think I can okay. answer your question. I think maybe what you're asking is how, like, do you want this at your school and your country? Well, I mean, my school, my kids go to schools where I'm in SSA at, and we have harvest of the month, and I, I, I could go in and do this, but I've never heard of this going on at my kids' school. Absolutely. And so, in each of the things, what we call program managers, so for example, I manage the programs in Palermo and Willow School District. So students that I work with, we help facilitate the demo. So each program manager does it differently. I so I know Carol Lambs is one that oversees Chico Unified. So okay. talk to her, and I, I promise you that she would help you make it happen. Sure. Yeah. So that's yeah. it.
I mean, so we're always really, really careful ahead of time. But usually when we sign up for cooking demos, and I'm glad you brought that up, I always like to ask my teachers right on the sign-up sheet, do you have any children with allergies? Because if I know that ahead of time, then I can figure something out and request a different recipe. But it's always good just to double check when you first go one, because I've gone in the classroom and had someone allergic to pineapple. I mean, that's not like a common food allergy, but it was good that we asked because I just did like a separate little, I didn't mix the pineapple and the fruit salad. I mixed it like kept it all different and then I gave the kid his about pineapple and then mixed it all in. Generally teachers will know too um, who's coming in with food allergies and whatnot. And it's hard to tell when a three-year-old comes or a you know third grader comes up to you and is like, I don't like onions versus I have an onion allergy. You know, you're not really sure, but teachers have a really good understanding of that. So they're Anyone else have any questions or any comments? Can you just touch a little bit on how you order for these tastings? Yeah, of the course. difference between a demo versus doing it yourself and a sure. person setting? Sure. So this is our demo that we do. There's also what we call a DIY, which is a do it yourself. And um, and the do it yourself <laughs> is a recipe that comes pretty much already done. Um, it's the one for cucumbers is kind of similar. It's like a cucumber salsa. It comes already done in, um, in a container. So we literally just drop that off to the teacher with napkins. And I think that one comes with like tortilla chips to taste it with. And we literally just go to each classroom and knock, you know, knock on the door. Here's the tasting that you ordered and give it to them. And the teacher can do it at their own um, pace in their classroom. Versus this is a demo where they come in. It can range anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes where we're teaching the kids and cooking with them. And, um, you can order both of them online, and they're on our program drive, and there's a way to do it. And I can sit here and tell you all the steps of how to do it, but it's really easy to just talk to your program manager sometimes. Your program manager, or if you have um, another CNA that you work with, or if you're an intern and you're brand new, ask your program manager, ask your other staff members. They'll tell you how to do it, and they may be the ones who actually do the ordering for you, so that you just simply, you're told when you're cooking demo is, or you're DIY days, and you just go to the kitchen, pick up the materials, and head out to the school, and take care of it. That was a great question. I have a question. Anybody want to help me volunteer? Pass out food? <laughs> no? Okay, great. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions before we close our demonstration?